Welcome everybody, this is Cynthia. So today we're going to be looking at the foundations of natural breathing. And we're also going to be looking at Ujjayi breath, which is one of the most core practices for the asana or the moving yoga practice. Uh, we start with natural breath for a couple of reasons. One is natural breath, it's nothing fancy. It's just teaching your body what it means to come back to the fundamentals of breathing along with your, your body's anatomy, basically. And then all of the other breathing techniques that we do, no matter how physical or even how esoteric, actually tie into natural breath. And if you ever find yourself in a yoga practice where the breath is uh, challenging for you or unavailable for you in that moment, just come back to a gentle, simple, anatomically relevant breathing practice, which is what we're going to be looking at first. And before we do that, as we settle into our bodies, I want us to close our eyes and go into a brief meditation, drawing our attention inward. With your eyelids closed, open your inner gaze and send that downward into your body. Don't manipulate or change your breath but become aware of it. Like the tide coming in and moving back out, just becoming aware of this rhythm and this pattern that is always with you. As one of the few functions of the body that you don't need to control because it just happens, but you can. There's a malleability to the breath that can begin to intentionally serve any purpose that you decide upon. And again, without changing anything, just notice where your breath feels like it lands in your body. Is it shallow? Does it feel like it expresses itself in the front or maybe the sides or the back of your body? Can you become aware of your central axis and your spine and that very thin cord of energetic expression and life force right at that central axis or just in front of the spine? One of the yoga texts calls that central axis or Sushumna Nadi finer than a single strand of split hair. So just become aware of that center of yourself. Give yourself one more breath. And gently opening your eyes. Bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. You're still breathing. Notice where your breath is. Is it more at the top? Can you feel it at the bottom? Can you feel it in both? So honoring all of yourself, the whole container of yourself. The entire expanse of breath in yourself as that life force.
Bring your hands together. And let's begin. Ata Yoga Anushasanam. Let us begin. So, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be looking at natural breathing today. The primary muscles of breathing include your diaphragm muscle, which is, you could call it the floor of your rib cage and heart. You could call it the rooftop of your belly, right? And sometimes I like to think of the diaphragm muscle like an umbrella, only instead of the handle of that umbrella at the center, you wanna think of the handle of that umbrella toward the back because our diaphragm, here's this umbrella, if I were to turn sideways, the diaphragm has these little connections that move down the back. So the handle of that umbrella is in the back of the body and, and it kind of comes down and connects into the vertebrae. But having an image of the diaphragm, it can be very useful to know where your diaphragm is in your body and to know whether you've actually been exercising this muscle very much or not. So for this practice, I'm going to invite you in a few minutes, eventually, um, either to stay seated or actually to come on to your back. And if you're willing to start on your back, then try it. So you can find yourself onto even a couch or the floor, a carpet, a yoga mat, anything that's kind of comfortable for you to lie back on. Because what I'd like us to become aware of when we start to breathe naturally is this natural rising and falling of the diaphragm. As we know, the diaphragm engages on inhalation and it moves downward, which relaxes the pressure of the handle, all of those little fibers that connect to your spine. But in that inhalation, you're putting a gentle squeeze into your organs of digestion and elimination and gently squeezing, gently detoxifying everything in the abdominal cavity. And on your exhalation, you are releasing that umbrella top back up. In doing so, you're stretching those fibers along your spine. And when you're on your back, that stretch along your spine can be very decompressive. That is to say, it can take pressure out of the low back. So for anybody who has low back pain, learning how to breathe correctly, especially upon exhalation, becomes an extremely critical tool. And no amount of asana exercise or movement is going to be quite so helpful without that foundation of repatterning your breath. Over time, I don't exactly know why this happens, but over time, many of us have learned to exhale and kind of bear ourselves out, right? So you're exhaling and rather than drawing your navel back and up in a light Uddiyana Bandha, we'll talk more about the Bandhas a little bit later, but essentially what you're doing is finding a J action on exhalation, following the exhale of the diaphragm upward, drawing the navel up with that, most of us don't do that. Most of us exhale and just push our belly button straight back to our spine. Okay, this has been learned just through life and patterning and the fact that we're upright and maybe it's easier with gravity, we just kind of push our belly button back. Certain exercise programs, especially crunches and belly work, you'll hear teachers say, push your belly button to your spine, but that's reinforcing a, an actually really unhelpful pattern for the physical body, the energetic body, the subtle body, and 
everything that goes along with that. It's basically the whole body, right? Every layer of ourselves. So this exhalation not only can take pressure up and away from the low back, but it can also, you've just squeezed your organs of digestion and elimination, but that release allows new blood flow in. So that's where the detoxification can happen, is when blood can come in, the organs can be lifted up and off of each other, and there's a little more space in there. So having strength in your diaphragm is part of what I would consider deep core work. Not only is the diaphragm something that we're exercising, strengthening and stretching when we breathe deeply, but so are many of the other muscles, not just at the belly and core, what you might call the core. Nobody really has a good definition of what core is, but my definition is actually fairly broad. Um, but you are also stretching, strengthening, and breathing into your rib cage proper. And each rib has little muscles that line up between those ribs, very tiny muscles. And those are called your intercostal muscles. Again, I'm not gonna go too deep into anatomy. I'm more interested in the subtle body and how that moves within us. But it's worth knowing because when you start to strengthen and reinvigorate those intercostal muscles between the ribs. If you think of each rib connecting in the back of your body into your spine, then the more range of movement you have in those little muscles to expand and then to contract, the more movement those ribs in the back where they hook in have the ability to expand and contract also. So you're actually decompressing your upper spine and then squeezing it back out. So, so the entire spine should have movement to it when you breathe, okay? This includes your sacrum. Your sacrum should move when you breathe as well. And it's one indication if you have back pain, if your sacrum doesn't move, right? So having a moving and fluid spine Anatomically, it matters. Energetically, it matters. In terms of kind of the vibrance of that which holds you, it matters. Many of us actually only ever breathe into the top third of our lungs. And in some traditions, it's really the bottom of the lungs that you're trying to get to. Not only does that oxygenate us better, detoxify us better, but in some traditions, they would say that's where disease is held, is in that bottom part of the lungs. So giving yourself full deep breaths strengthens and exercises the deep core, opens, stretches, and stabilizes the spine, and re-energizes the entire circulatory system and pathways of detoxification in the body not to be considered a minor practice. Pranayama is one of the most important practices we do in yoga. What we will do is find ourselves in a practice position on our backs, if that's available to you. If for some reason it's not, that's okay. Sitting at a wall is also all right, or sitting up in a chair. We will be transitioning to upright, so maybe you're just getting double of that, but listen to what your body needs, okay? So I'm gonna send us through a little recap and a little visual journey of the spine here. With your eyes closed, open your inner gaze and send that gaze now into your spine. As you inhale, feel for your rib cage brightening in all directions, the side ribs, the back ribs, the front ribs. As you exhale, feel your diaphragm releasing up into that space that you've just created, 
gently tugging on the low back. Take a full inhalation through your nose. And from the perspective of your spine, feel that when you expand your rib cage, the front, the sides, and the back of the ribs, the vertebrae of your spine gently move away from each other. So essentially, you're growing a little bit taller in your upper back, in your thoracic spine. And when you exhale, while you hold on to a little bit of that space and draw your low belly back and up through the rising of the diaphragm, the releasing of the diaphragm toward the heart, think of your low back decompressing and getting a little bit taller. Essentially, you have an opportunity to claim your height on your inhalation by stretching the rib cage, stretching the intercostal muscles between the ribs, stretching where the ribs connect and cup into the bones of the spine at the back of your body, and feeling that spaciousness expand in the full claiming of it. And you can grow a little bit taller on your exhalation from your low back. As you move your diaphragm up into that space, as you allow the organs of the deep belly to glide up and away from the pelvic floor, up and toward the heart, and as you comb energetically from your tailbone upward toward that heart cavity. Claim your space, claim your height. Inhale, get taller. Exhale, get taller. Do that a few more times. Remember, you're not pushing your belly button into your low back when you exhale. You're allowing the spaciousness of your rib cage to invite the full functionality of your diaphragm. So that when you exhale, it's almost like your belly button is drawing the letter J back and then up toward the heart. It's not a U, it's a full J with that long tail of breath supporting your height. Now into this practice, Soften the sides of your jaw, the backs of your ears, and your neck muscles. Trust the pattern that you've already set at your heart and at your belly, and begin to focus on where the sound of your breath is. Does it feel to you like you're breathing in through your nostril and listening to the breath there? So we're going to slip toward an ujjayi breath now. Imagine constricting the base of your throat, the glottis muscles at the base of your throat. If you were drinking your breath in through your nose into a straw, and that straw were moving into your heart. It's as though you've just narrowed the straw from a wide straw to like a very thin little decorative straw. <laughs> Let's call it a decorative straw. A very narrow straw. And notice the effect of that. For one thing, the sound of the breath itself lengthens the breath elongates. And perhaps, just maybe, the sound of that breath can move down to the base of your throat and away from your nostrils. 
so that eventually you're listening to the sound of your breath in your heart center. Additionally, you may feel with this victorious breath, with this ujjayi breath, that there is a deep warming up of the internal body. An activating of the deep prana at the heart center and perhaps even at the solar plexus. As the solar plexus, the fire of digestion, starts to move in rhythm and concert with the heart. Keep the sound of your breath, narrow straw, inhaling sound of the breath at the heart, exhaling sound of the breath at the heart. And then open your ears to the actual sound. Notice that when you inhale, there's a slight ha, H, A quality. This H sound riding in with the inhalation. Observe that. And then observe that on your exhalation, there's a slight S, quality to it. In fact, the yogis noticed this. And one of the most beautiful mantras that we can use in our breathing practice, which is a meditation mantra and a focusing tool, is the mantra hum sa. You can inhale with the sound hum and exhale with the sound sa. There's an alchemy to this package of sound that plunges our awareness into our heart. For the sound hum sa as a meditation tool and as a mantra, translates roughly as that I am. I am that. Which is one of the deepest self inquiry statements one can make when in the process of self-discovery, when asking ourselves the question, who am I? We can build this question, we can build this intention into our breath. Who am I? And then what is my relationship? to the people, the things, the elements, the places around me. Hum Sa. Let that intention stay. Come back into the anatomy of your spine. You're growing taller on inhalation and growing taller on exhalation. Can you find a prayerful meeting place of that claiming of your height 
in your throat. That is to say, inhale, grow taller at your rib cage, thoracic spine. Exhale, grow taller at the low body, lumbar spine. And in both, comb that energy through the throat. So the entire spine is alive and cooperating with this prayer package that you're inhaling, drawing down and exhaling, moving back out. Inhaling, you're taking the breath of the outside earth, the world, into your heart. Accepting, receiving, getting sensitive, and exhaling from that sensitivity, from that heart space, back out into the world. Let go of the practice and just feel the residue of inner height, inner responsibility, inner curiosity from the tip of the tailbone through the low back, through the mid back and the upper back, through the throat. even into the skull as it rides with the breath. This rhythm that is with us as the rhythm of the body in our lives. If you're on your back, Drop your knees over to one side and curl up into a little ball. Noticing that the whole system is connected We don't open one thing and stay frozen somewhere else. We start to open into the soft, animal-like quality of the entire system of the body. And press yourself up slowly. So we're going to find this practice seated in just a moment. Take your time. When you come upright, sit up on something, a blanket, a block, two blocks, however many supports that you need underneath you so that your leg bones can be heavy. So you're not using your leg muscles to try to hold your spine up. And with your spine tall and with your body seated, just without the hands now on the heart, cup your hands to point them to face down and bring your top hand right where your diaphragm is, kind of where this, the bottom of the breastbone touches into the body, the xiphoid process here, just underneath that. And then the lower hand right around the front of the, the pubic bone. If your feet are in the way, you can lift it up a little bit. Your thumbs can just rest a little bit on your body, but try to let your spine lift up straight. When you inhale, feel the center of the palms like two little jellyfish slowly and softly lowering toward the earth. 
When you exhale, bend at the center of the palm to pull a little bit up. So just a very gentle hand action to feel what's happening inside your body in your diaphragm and in your pelvic floor and how they work together. So you're inhaling, feeling that gentle squeeze downward, our apana prana, our rooting of energy toward the earth. And our exhalation with prana, pulling prana up the line of the spine to get taller. Inhaling, apana. Exhaling, prana. Do that two more times. There's a physical body component to this. You're still decompressing your spine, especially on that exhalation. And then you'll release your hands to your legs. Think less about your pelvic floor now. It's just doing its thing. If you tip your weight onto your tailbone, you will lose it. The pelvic floor will only come into proper alignment when you're seated on your four points equally, tailbone, two sitting bones, and then pubic symphysis. Like the bottom of a diamond. And now while you're seated, you really can feel this. When we were on our back, we, we didn't have to resist gravity, but now we kind of do, right? So I want you to think of your exhalations here. Don't worry about the ujjayi, don't worry about the sound just yet. Come back into the natural breath. We'll add that in a moment, but inhale. And as you exhale, just feel for that light movement of your diaphragm up. Feel for that drawing back and up of your low belly, that J shape. You may have to sit a little taller to really feel that. On your inhalation, it's helpful to feel the rib cage expanding side to side, the back of the heart moving back and the front of the heart moving forward. So you're completely dimensional. Maintain some of that spaciousness. As you exhale, it helps. It creates the physical cave or cavity to draw that diaphragm up, returning to the heart. Do that one more time with that light Uddiyana Bandha. Low belly just gently backing up. Yes, you might feel the pelvic floor engage, but that's secondary. It'll just happen naturally. Then start to add your ujjayi breath, the sound of your breath. Inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your nose. Constrict the base of your throat and move your breath as low down to the heart as possible. Eventually you actually hear the sound of the breath at the heart space. The breath focuses the mind. The breath plunges our awareness into the heart. The breath heats up the body by increasing circulation and detoxification. By exercising the breathing muscles. And by calming the nervous system, especially on that exhalation, putting a little bit of tip into that vagus nerve, a little bit of stimulation there, so that you are moving away from the stress response and into the parasympathetic nervous system. That's where meditation can blossom. You don't have to force your mind into stillness. It kind of hops on the train of the breath and the breath carries you naturally down the hill into that stillness. If you like the sound hamsa, do that. 
and we'll slip into just about a minute here of silence. If you feel agitated, if it feels like too much for you, you can open your eyes. If it's comfortable with your eyes closed, try to keep directing inward. Bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. Like we did in the beginning of this conversation. And now feel where your breath is. Notice what you notice. Giving yourself attention love and care, touch, truly giving yourself touch from the inside of your body. The hands touch from the outside, but the breath touches from the inside. In a certain sense, you are making a prayer between that external touch and that internal touch. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Palms touch. Atta Yoga Anushasanam, here begins your practice. Gently open your eyes, let your hands go.